world for a long time, probably since I was 14. So in terms of how fun that was for me, uh, it's, it's something I really enjoy doing and, and kind of fantasize about what, uh, what a future reality would be. And so that was, that was really fun. And being able to, to put together a future world that felt relatable. You know, I've seen a lot of future worlds put together in, in films, but some uh, extremely well. Others that I always question what they did with our world that, you know, some future environment say it's 100 years, 50 years in the future, and it's as though we've taken the entire world as we know it and put it in one big world store to start over. And that's never made any sense to me. And, and so I wanted to make sure that as fantastic and, and, and otherworldly as this future world would look, if you travel down to the base level, it's still something familiar. It'd still be the same buildings that have existed for hundreds of years and, and, and connected to something that is, that is still real. And uh, so that part was immensely fun for me. And uh, in terms of inspiration, it's, it's, uh, it's too many it's, uh, since I was a kid. I was really excited about it. I hadn't done something that was this for probably six or seven years or so, or eight years. Um, I knew it was going to be a long shoot as well. The shoot was five or six months long. And every day I'm either running, jumping, falling, fighting, shouting, screaming, getting hit, punching, shooting. Um, I may have. And then he went to work. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was really looking forward to it because it was just the first time I got to work physically for, for that long year. You know, I, I actually. I like to think that, um, uh, again, the, the paranoia thing is very uh, attractive to me. I would say that we're getting closer and closer to that with, with every generation. And so I, I actually I don't think it's something that, that is that outrageous that, um, that, that somebody could possibly experience. And whether or not that's a good thing, um, you know, this, this, this movie tells um, a, a very dark tale of that. And, um, and I, I think that that's that's possibly ahead, whatever form it is. Um, I, I think that it's, it's going to get to a place where there's, there's so much escapism right now, pulling yourself out with people that, that kind of create their own avatars and their, their own, um, it's, it's kind of an expanded sort of um, exploded version of what Dungeons and Dragons used to be for kids that would um, you know, kind of create these other personalities and they were more into those characters than they were in their real life. And I think with, um, with technology that's just continuing. And um, you know, half the people that you probably uh, that are out there on on, on Facebook and such are. Um, you know, is that really what you like? You know, who, who knows? But um, I think it's very possible. I mean, you're playing two sides of the same coin. I, you know, you. It begs the question: What's what's in a name? You know, really, what's in a name, and what is the foundation from which a man is born? You know, it's the age-old question of nature versus nurture and all that. Type of stuff. Basically, playing somebody who very early on in the film finds out, as you know, that everything that he thought was real and was true in his life was a fallacy, was an absolute fabrication. And so, in one sense, he thinks he's cursed by not having a past because we all use our pasts as some kind of reflective board by which to judge uh, where we are in our present. And um, and in one sense, he feels cursed by not having a past, by not having memories. He feels like, you know, he feels like. A man alone, adrift on an ocean of, of, of lack of self-awareness and lack of self-knowledge. Um, but it, I think it comes to pass that he's actually blessed in a way because he gets to, to, to really be immersed in the present in a way that he may never have experienced. Uh, playing both characters, by the end of the film, I don't know which one exists, it's kind of like neither exists. Either Quaid or has, it was some kind of amalgam of both men by the end of the film, I think. He really was so far out of time. Um, it was very important to me. I'm also just fascinated by, it. you know, anything that um, just the, the paranoia side of science fiction. I really love, you know. So and also, uh, it just, you know, I, I love science fiction because it's, it's an extension of possibly what science can can actually, you know, where where it can possibly bring us. And that's not always a, a, a you know a good thing. And so that that paranoia of the what if um, was was very important to me. And also just from a from a character point of view, about how you how you really process something like that, and if you you know just imagine if you if you were being told that you are somebody else, and not only being told but you were being shown proof that you are that person, and what that would actually do to you, and how you how you deal with that. I think Philip K. Dick, um, you know, that's that's apparent in a lot of his work that um, that I, I'm just a person that's you know just uh, you know really interested in. So. To answer the question, is, you know, basically, 
I was, I was very important. I, mean, I wish they were separated out. I wish there would be categories uh, like I think they do with the with the Emmys, right? I mean, don't they kind of categorize it a little bit more than um, you know? Because the, the movies are it's, it's, they are they are very different genres. Um, but for for me, I've always the this this genre. Um, I, I take it as serious as when I'm uh, watching movies that are nominated. Um, so, uh, and I think that comes from being a, a fan of the genre, that um, hopefully the filmmakers that are involved um, are, are taking it as serious as anything else. But it's designed to entertain, man. I mean, that's the, the, the bottom line. If we can provoke thought, or if there is some element of, you know, subversive commentary in the film, or some idea of, um, having an opinion about Big Brother, or, you know, government, uh, the small population, the few, ruling in a brutal and very self-serving way, the majority of the people are supposed to be protecting, and the idea of human beings not having as much control of their lives as we think, because there are decisions made for us, and there are very clear parameters by which we can exist, and those parameters are contained by law, religion, etc., etc., etc. Any of that comes across, that's cool. That's not what it comes to me. I understand, that's exactly what I just said. <laughs> I mean, that's what we spoke about the first meeting, me and Matt. And they were like, fuck it, let's just have fun! Let's 3D this shit! No. <laughs> but, you know, if, it, if this film doesn't entertain, honestly, for two hours, it should really entertain anyone who goes to see it. If it doesn't, well, I'm Brian hasn't done his job. He's a good Big guy for the bad guy. How did he get activated? I want him alive. Tell me what's going on. Just trying to recover what's in your head. We're gonna need your seatbelt on! <laughs>